An uproar over King Kashwayo's Asahai that was seized in July of 1879 is raging on as more South Africans call on the British government to return it. The Asahai was seized together with other items by the British Army in Ulundi after the Battle of Isandwana. Other items were also um, seized there and we will be in discussion now with a historian to tell us more. Historian and a former member of Parliament, Arthur uh, Connie Cron who joins us now to discuss this matter further. A very good morning to you. Thank you so much for your time. Enough is enough. Um, bring the artifacts back is what uh, South Africa is saying. And uh, at the center of it is a lot of talk about a weapon called the Asahai. Tell us more about this. Well, what, what happened in, in, in 1879 after, the, uh, after Lord Chancellor had destroyed on the and he burnt it to the ground. Um, uh, Garnet Wolsey was then appointed to replace him. And so what, what, what then happened was Garnet Wolsey, the, the king had fled, obviously, and he was hiding in the Ngoma Forest, and he was tracked down by, by uh, General Martyr, and uh, they found him and um, ordered him out of his uh, traditional dwelling and uh, he invited Garnet Wolsey in and wanted to know who he was. And Garnet Wolsey then very arrogantly said that if he didn't open, he would burn it down. So eventually he came out, and uh, inside they then found quite a lot of artifacts from the battle. There were, there were some of the, the, the rifles that were used at, at, the, at the Battle of Isandwine and various other things. But more importantly, there was a very special, uh, what is known in Isidulu as an Mkwanto, an assegai, which was multi-headed. And John Dunn, who was a white trader who was there, recognized this as having, uh, having belonged to the king. So what, uh, what, what happened was Garnet Wolsey then took this assegai and he presented it to Queen Victoria. Now, certainly in my judgment, that, that is, as I said in my newspaper article, I think the British royalty are therefore in, in possession of, of, of stolen property. But uh, what I would like to elaborate on it um, is that, secondly, I mean, apart from the injustice of it, I and mean, then coming in here and destroying the kingdom, destroying uh, Ondini, um, just before the Battle of Isandwana, the Prince Imperial of France, uh, on the advance to Tuolundi, Chul went out on a reconnaissance. And they were they were a little careless. They were they were having tea near in in Ramuzi, and suddenly about twelve villas rushed upon them. Um, they then fled, and he was a very accomplished horseman, and he very seldom got onto a horse using a stirrup. He would vault onto the horse. But anyway, when he grabbed hold of the um, the holster, the, it, it it gave way, and he fell. And so. The significance of that story is that carrying with him, uh, he was carrying with him uh, a very famous sword which belonged to Napoleon um, that was used at the Battle of Austerlitz. And it was a sword whose sheath was covered in diamonds and pearls and very precious stones. So when, when uh, uh, Chancellor asked the king about this, he, did, he had never heard about this incident because it was a long way from, the, from Olundi. But anyway, he sent people out, and uh, they went and retrieved it, and and uh, Petroio graciously uh, handed it over. And it was then uh, given back to the Princess Eugenie, uh, the prince's mother, uh, who eventually came out um, to South Africa, uh, visited the, the grave site. What is quite interesting is because this story is quite well known, is that while I was chairman of the Heritage Council, that grave was dug up three or four times to a depth of six foot, six feet. Mm. People were looking for this famous sword. But of course, it was um, it was taken back to England. And uh, so, as I say, the Zulus very magnanimously, they, they, after their kingdom had been destroyed, they were certainly under no obligation to hand that back, but they did. And then uh, the Princess uh, Eugenie came out here, his mother, and visited the, um, the, the, the the site where he was killed, and 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 there's a memorial there. But of course, the body was taken back, and it was uh, buried um, in Chisholm, in England. 
The Battle of I Isandrana is a story of, of pride, not only for the Zulu nation, but for South Africa and the continent at large. And um, it, this, this Umkonto is of high significance to South Africa when it comes to, to the talks and um, perhaps uh, the, the interaction with Britain to see if we can get it back. Where are we standing as a nation? Well, I, I you know... I wrote, I wrote an article about it, and there were some historians that were, I think, rather flippant in saying that, you know, there was no place to store it there. That's not true. Um, we we built a, uh, it obviously should be at Ondini, which is the original headquarters of Kim Ketwaya, which has been partially restored. And there's a very, very, um, very, very well organized museum there with vaults and everything else. So it's very easy to. Uh, to 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 store it properly, and mm -hmm. so it should come back to South Africa, and it would be it would be a great attraction uh, from a tourism point of view. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, thank you so much. We're going to have to leave it there for now. Uh, former member of Parliament of the IFP, Arthur Connie Kramer, speaking to us about uh, the return and the call for Britain to return Zulu artifacts. That